All right, so at this point, the Steam Summer Sale is in full swing, and that is both an amazing thing and potentially a kind of harrowing thing. Because on the one hand, it's awesome that a ton of games that you've probably been thinking about are already on sale, but on the other hand, there are a ton of games that are on sale. So you might be completely delighted that a bunch of games from your wishlist are now on sale and cheaper to pick up, or you might be completely crushed by the fact that there are a ton of games that you wanted that are on sale, and it's probably going to wreak havoc on your wallet. Now, as for me, it has started to wreak havoc on my wallet, but it hasn't crushed me entirely just yet, but I did go ahead and pick up seven new games, or at least new to me, I guess I should say, during the summer sale. I don't know if I'm going to stop at seven games, but at least so far, I've been able to kind of control myself, and that's what today's video is all about. I just wanted to go over seven new games, again, new games to me, that I picked up during the summer sale and started to, you know, kind of play around with and check out, and... Honestly, it's rare that I pick up a selection of games during a sale where everything just seems to come up aces and I've really enjoyed every single title, but that's exactly what happened with this first batch of games that I picked up during the summer sale, so without further ado, I'm not going to waste any more time, I'm just going to dive right into the games, and the first one that I picked up that I've been waiting on for quite some time was Dusk. Now, I'm not super familiar with Dusk. The only thing that I knew was that I'd heard rumblings here and there online about what an incredible Doom clone it was. And in fact, it's so good, at least in this initial time that I've spent with it, that it's almost insulting to call it a Doom clone, although clearly it's paying homage to the 3D FPSs that we got during those early and mid-90s when the genre was still in its infancy. Now, to be fair, I've always been a fan of that retro aesthetic, specifically the ones that pay homage to, like, the 16-bit and 8-bit era, but it's rare that I really find a game that's sort of designed to look sort of chunky and pixelated in the way that those early 3D games were, but even though a lot of them, on a technical level, you would say did not age well from that era, whenever people go back or developers try to actually just emulate the look of that, but with a little bit of an update, where maybe, like, the lighting effects are improved, or there are, like, particle effects that you would not necessarily have seen during that era, and it's layered on top of the sort of low-res texture work that you would see from that same time frame, I think you can get really good results, and I think that's exactly what happens here in Dusk. Now, admittedly, I paid very little attention to the opening or what the story was all about, because I really just wanted to dive into the action and see how it compared to, you know, the fond memories that I have of playing games like, you know, Doom or Wolfenstein or Hexen or, you know, the controls and the movement and the way it feels there. And I gotta say, they absolutely nailed it. And if you were a fan of the movement in those early games, or for that matter, you could even say Doom 2016 or Doom Eternal, you're probably really gonna like the movement in Dusk as well, because it perfectly captures that ebb and flow of movement as you switch directions rapidly as you begin to strafe around an enemy, and just the combination of how that animation plays out and that feel of momentum as you come to a dead stop and then bounce back into a different direction, it just feels perfect. But beyond nailing just like the technical look and feel of those games, I also just really like the atmosphere that it builds here. It seems to ping pong back and forth between these wide open environments where you've got a lot of room to run around and dodge incoming enemy projectiles, and also sort of like tight, creepy corridor style environments, so it really does have a really strong emphasis on that search and destroy methodology that was so heavily employed by Doom. And if you're curious about whether or not you should take the leap on this game and whether or not it's worth full price, it's a great time to take the leap now because it's on sale for I believe seven or eight bucks, but even if you miss the sale and you know you have to pay like 20 bucks for it, I would say it's definitely still worth it because this game just feels excellent so far, at least in my initial playtime with it. Now next up on this list is another game that places a particular emphasis on speed, and that is Neon White. Neon White was a game that I saw actually showcased during one of the Nintendo Switch events, and initially when I saw it I wasn't overly impressed with it. At a glance, all I could really tell was that it was a first-person game that seemed to make speed a pretty big emphasis, but also the fact that it was card-based kind of threw me off a little bit. It's not that I don't like any card games. I personally just had some mixed experiences when someone tries to take a card-based mechanic and then shoehorn it into a different genre, but here it doesn't feel shoehorned at all. It feels completely natural. Essentially, each level is designed around speedrunning, and it's your job to basically make it from point A to point B in the heavenly level that you find yourself and clear it of all demons with the shortest time possible. Also, I was pleasantly surprised to see that there were some really interesting characters, but more so, I was happy to see that they are all fully voice acted. Initially, whenever I was watching some of the early trailers for the game, it looked like it was going to be a lot of text-based dialogue, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? You can still tell a great story with just on-screen text, but I always like whenever there is voice acting. I've only spent about an hour or two with Neon White so far, but I have to say that's plenty of time to make a lot of progress, because a lot of the levels that you go through will really only take you anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute tops. And really, there's a big emphasis on finishing levels as quickly and efficiently as possible, because depending on how well you do in each level, it allows you to unlock a higher rank, and that rank is needed so you can progress to later stages in the game. And much like Dusk, the movement here feels really, really slick. It's just a whole lot of fun to speed run through each one of these levels, and each of the cards you pick up has a lot of utility as well, because you can either use it directly for an offensive capability, whether that's like a pistol or a machine gun, for example, but then you might opt to discard the card, which provides a completely different ability, which might allow you to jump really high vertically, or blast Neon straight ahead at high speed so you can clear a particular gap. 
I would say the biggest part of the fun that you derive from Neon White's gameplay really comes from working out the mental math of when exactly to use those abilities and when you should hold off on them. And I would say that most of the fun that gets derived from Neon White's gameplay is determining when and how to use these abilities so that you can get the best time possible. Throw in the fact that in between missions you're interacting with a range of colorful and often hilarious characters, and there's a whole lot of incentive here to keep pushing through Neon White's mystery and unravel exactly why you were picked to come to heaven and clear it of demons. And I gotta say, out of all the games I got, this one might be my favorite so far. But stepping back into the 2D realm for a minute, the next game that I picked up was Steel Assault. Now, Steel Assault, I wasn't real sure what to think of it the first time that I laid eyes on it. Honestly, it sort of looked like a blend between Castlevania and Contra, maybe? I wasn't sure. All I knew was that you had, like, a fairly 80s-looking action hero, like a future sci-fi type setting, with a whip, which... To me, obviously conjured up a lot of imagery of Castlevania, but at the same time, it seemed like the enemies came at you a lot more quickly than what you might have been used to in those early 2D Castlevania entries, and so far I've only played it a little bit, but while I thought the whip would be the defining characteristic, the bigger gameplay mechanic that I thought was more interesting is the zipline that you have. And the zipline that you employ can be used either vertically, horizontally, or diagonally, so in addition to having just a lot of just, you know, regular action that you would expect from a side-scrolling, like, 2D arcade shoot-em-up of sorts, this also opens up a lot of interesting traversal options for how you explore each level, and it also provides for more unique enemy placement, which causes you to really stay on your toes when you're trying to figure out how to deal with the various threats that surround you. Also, something else that I noticed when I first started testing this is that they allow you to remap the button prompts so that they match various controllers, be it Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo Switch, and I thought that was a really nice touch. However, as much as I love that arcade pixel aesthetic, I gotta say it is a fairly punishing game, or at least it was for me so far, where you have basically one life, at least as far as I can tell, and after that you basically have to start the level over, so I get the impression it's gonna be a bit of a punishing game, but one that I probably wanna see through to the end, because as I understand it, it's not a very long game, I think you can beat this in about two or three hours, might not even be that long, but a combination of like an 80s sort of synth wavy sci-fi action aesthetic and the fact that you've got just really responsive controls that are easy to understand again because of the remapping makes Steel Assault a game I definitely want to spend some more time with. And speaking of games that have interesting movement mechanics like zip lines for example, the next thing that I picked up was Webbed. Now I'm pretty sure I remember seeing like an early tech demo or some test videos of how the movement in web would work, but the basic premise is that you play as a spider and your boyfriend has been kidnapped by a giant bird and it's your job to work together with your other bug friends and figure out a way to get him back. And you do this predominantly through a lot of platforming and light puzzle solving. However, I will point out that the game also has a dedicated spider dance button, which I thought was absolutely adorable. But hey, adorable cartoon spider dancing aside, I think the biggest draw here is the mechanic of actually being a spider. So in addition to the regular mechanics you would expect from any platformer, which is, you know, running and jumping, you also have the ability to weave webs or build yourself small bridges by shooting a web to connect two separate points. And at first I thought this might be kind of a pain to deal with as you start to build like multiple bridges or webs or try to build more complex shapes, but thankfully, for reasons that I cannot explain, the spider also has a laser, which will completely decimate any webs you've built so that you can start over quickly and easily. Now you can tell just by looking at gameplay footage of web that it is an incredibly charming looking game. And at first I was a little bit worried because oftentimes whenever you see games that are labeled as charming, sometimes they can just be really simple or just kind of shallow. But I don't get that impression from Webb, and I have a sneaking suspicion that by the time I start making it to the later game, that it's going to be a lot deeper and a lot richer than what these opening hours have put out so far. I'm not saying the opening hours have been bad or anything like that. I'm just saying I don't think you could be faulted entirely for being a little bit skeptical about Webb based on its cutesy presentation, and assuming it might be more of a simple game and not really have that much depth to it. But I'll have to see for myself after I spend some more time running around as an adorable cartoon spider. Next up is a game I'm pretty sure I'm going to mispronounce. All I can tell you is it's spelled T-O-E-M, and I'm not sure if that's supposed to be Toem? 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 Whatever it is, the point is it's a charming little isometric cartoony looking game. However, it is doled out in a black and white aesthetic, but it seems like the primary goal of this game is to have you travel from one village to the next while taking a ton of photographs. Now, personally, I've never really thought of myself as much of a photographer. I always prefer video because I feel like the margin for error is much greater, but Tomes really grabbed my attention. It's a quiet, simple, chill sort of game with a very distinct aesthetic, although I'm curious to see if it's really going to maintain that monochromatic look throughout the entirety of the game, or if at some point maybe the world will start to get colored and filled in sort of Pleasantville style. Now obviously I can't say at this point if it's going to do that or not, but even if it doesn't, I still suspect I'm going to have a really good time in this very chill, relaxing sort of experience compared to some of the faster, more violent experiences that I talked about earlier on this list because there's just something super relaxing about just sort of moseying from one town to the next where you're completing lightweight quests for various members of the village and in turn earning yourself community stamps so that you can ride the bus and go explore other villages. I think that's a really simple, straightforward concept. And I'm guessing that based on the inclusion of these ancillary characters, which seem to be every bit as adorable as the main character, that I'm gonna have a really good time sort of unraveling what Tome's all about. 
And perhaps unsurprisingly, like every other game on this list, it runs butter smooth on the Steam Deck, which I would hope so because it's certainly a slower mosing style game compared to, you know, like the breakneck pace of something like Dusk or Neon White. So if you are looking for a slower, more serene, albeit monochromatic experience on the Steam Deck that's just gonna give you a chill time without a whole lot of stress, I think Tone will be worth a look. However, if you prefer your slower, more zen-like video game experiences to be a little bit more involved and a whole lot more colorful, the next game that I grabbed was A Short Hike. And one of the things that jumped out to me immediately about A Short Hike was the presentation. Now, I don't just mean that aesthetically speaking, that it's like kind of a gorgeous outdoorsy environment that just begs you to explore as much as you can, but rather, in addition to that, technically speaking, they provide options for you to make the graphics extremely chunky or extremely smooth. So if you want a short hike to look more like a DS or a 3DS game, it actually does give you the option to have big old chunky pixels if you want, or if you want to look as butter smooth as possible, you can totally tone that down and make it look just silky smooth as if it's hand drawn or something like that. But in a short hike, you play as a bird named Claire who is, well, going for a short hike. But along the way, you're gonna meet a bunch of equally charming characters and they're charming not just because, you know, most animal characters are adorable, but also because like Animal Crossing, they speak in that adorable sort of beep speak and I gotta say, in the short time I've spent with it so far, I'm already pretty hooked on this game. I love the idea that you can just sort of wander serenely through these beautiful locations, but then also because you're a bird, you can absolutely glide from a high point to a low point or use it to cross various obstacles. And littered across the island, you'll find a range of collectibles that you can pick up, or you might meet some new friends along the way who invite you to engage in a variety of activities for which you might gain some new accessories for Claire. I suspect that a big part of the narrative for a short hike is going to be instilling in the player a sense of wonder and adventure and how important it is to sort of live in the moment and go out and explore new things. Particularly because right off the bat it makes it clear whenever you go to the pause menu that you don't have access to a cell phone because there's no signal where you are. But like Webbed and Tome, I suspect that a short hike is actually going to be narratively and mechanically a lot deeper than it appears to be at the outset of the adventure. All right, and that's it. Those are all the games I picked up on the summer sale so far. I say so far because I'm fairly certain in the next few weeks I will probably be buying a ton more Steam games because, you know, the Steam Deck has opened up an entirely new range of experiences for me. But hey, what about you? Are there any of the games on this list that you think were particularly interesting or those that you would recommend for me to check out before the summer sale comes to a close here in a few weeks? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch. It means a ton. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you on the next one.